Well, check this out. Think of me like a newbie in hacking stuff. I just installed Kaylee Linux and someone told me about phishing. They told me about a tool named Fisher and said I could hack anyone's social media account with it. He also taught me how to use the tool. You just run one command, select a template, send it to the victim, and then you can get their credentials. Now just see what happened when I executed that Zafisha script. Our tool is running, we can create a phishing page, but there's a twist. Let me show you my other Linux box. On that Linux box I have a reverse shell from the first machine, because I ran a tool someone helped me install without knowing what I was doing. I did this by typing one extra reverse shell line into this Fisher file, and that gave me access to the other computer. That happened because I ran stuff without knowing what I was doing. Linux is open source and comes in different flavors called distros, but unfortunately they don't come with antiviruses. A few have protections, but most don't. In this case, Kaylee Linux has nothing to protect it from malware, and that's the case with many Linux distributions. Most people think Linux doesn't need antivirus. Well, that's partly true, but misleading. Linux doesn't need antivirus because the people who use Linux usually know what they are doing. They don't just run scripts blindly. Still, cross-platform malware exists and Linux can be affected, so antivirus can matter. First of all, don't just install tools from someone. Using tools isn't bad, but if you want to use one, make sure you're installing it from a trusted source. Check the repo URL to see whether it's from the official project or whether the person you're trusting has modified it. The same thing that happened with that Z Fisher script can also be done with a single command. An attacker can manipulate you into running a malicious command in your terminal and gain access to your system. In this example, the command doesn't look malicious at first, but check what happens when I execute it in my terminal. You can see we get a shell again. With that single line, the attacker got access to our system and there was no antivirus alert. Another mistake most newbies make is running tools as root by habit. That's a very bad practice. If you're careless enough to run a malicious tool or command, running as root lets an attacker escalate privileges on your system. Don't run every script with root permissions. If a script requires root permissions, analyze the script. If you don't know coding or can't read that language, use AI chatbots to help you analyze those codes. Don't download pre-built binaries from unknown sources. As I mentioned earlier, Cross-platform malware is still a big threat to Linux operating systems, though hackers mostly don't waste their time writing malware for Linux. The thing I like about Linux is that you have full control over it. You can do whatever you want with it. But that can be very dangerous too, because misconfigured services can create big problems and give hackers access to your system. For example, not changing the default password for SSH or keeping ports exposed without reason. Next time, if you copy-paste a command from somewhere, read it from top to bottom. Look for commands like rm, dd, curl, or anything that looks suspicious. You can also paste it into an LLM to dissect it before executing. Run your Linux operating system inside an isolated VM or Docker container if your system has enough resources. Verify sources like GitHub repos, commit history, and author reputation before running any tool. If it's a binary, make sure to check signatures or checksums. If you keep important data on your Linux system, don't run risky commands unless you know what you're doing. Always back up your data, monitor your system, and finally, keep it updated all the time. Well, that's all I've got for you in this video. If you found it useful, maybe give it a like and subscribe, because I often upload content related to hacking and cybersecurity.